Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Well, as you know, the days are getting shorter, it's getting darker, and the weather is getting colder. And that's not a problem for some people, but for others, it can be an absolute nightmare because they suffer from something called seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. Now, SAD is a type of depression that affects around 7% of the UK population. So it's quite a few people. It happens every winter between September and April, but in particular during December, January, and February. My guests tonight are Claire Eva Pierce, a counsellor and therapist, and Jonathan Cridland, CEO of Lumi, a company that researches and designs bright lights to treat SAD and other conditions. And later on in the show as well, we'll be featuring our coverage of the Africa Fashion Week as presented by our fashionista Lisa Marie. So if you want to get involved in the show tonight, you can tweet Chrissy B Show, you can also Facebook the Chrissy B Show. And you can also email chris at chrissybshow.tv. And if you'd like to call up, maybe this is something that you go through, you know, you get a bit depressed during this time of year, you can call up and give us your comments as well on 020-7686-6300. But first, let's introduce our guest, Claire Eva Pierce. Good evening, Claire. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's, thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure. So tell us a bit about what you do, first of all, Claire. Um, well, just so you know, I'm a counsellor. I'm a mm -hmm. BACP accredited counsellor stroke yeah. therapist. Um, I'm a holistic counsellor, so mm -hmm. basically I work with individuals, um, generally it's people who are over 18. I help right. them find a way out through their difficulties. Okay. So people come and see me and for a variety of reasons and I support them through to their That's problems. Great. So you, you've obviously got a personal experience with SAD, can you tell us about that? I can. Um, I noticed that during the winter, I started, during the darker days, particularly mm. around when we changed the clocks, yeah. I started to feel really lethargic, I started to crave car more carbohydrates, I was really tired, um, I woke up, I felt unrested, my sleep was disrupted. How, um, how old were you at the time you noticed it? Were ooh, you, I, I was, was it? talking probably not so long ago. Oh right, okay, it's quite recent. Within the last five years. Okay. All right, so you noticed that but normally you were quite energetic sort of during that time, winter periods, and you, it didn't really affect you that much, but then you noticed it just uh, quite recently. It's probably been going on, I, it's probably been going on for years, but mm. I, I somehow noticed it more acutely. Maybe okay. as I got older, more homo hormonally, maybe things, you know, as you get older, yeah, you know, yeah. hormones perhaps not as balanced as they were. I don't mm -hmm. know, either way, I just started being more lethargic and mm. sluggish. What did you think that was at the time before you actually realised what it was? Like? I'm not sure I made the connection, if I'm honest. Mm. I just, I, it didn't occur, I hadn't come across seasonal affective disorder at that time. Mm. So I just thought, I always knew that I love the sunlight. Yeah. I just thought I was tired. You know, I put it down to other things, maybe working hard mm. or other stresses and strains in my life at the time. Yeah. I think most people would, but then it's like you start to kind of put the pieces together don't you because I actually because I went through depression some years ago as well yeah. and I remember like the, the winter periods were a nightmare for me I used to it used to be I mean I used to be pretty bad throughout the year but then <clears throat> when it started to get dark early like you're saying mm. I got much worse it was really awful and I would dread sort of the winter months and like when it was cold and when it was dull and there was no sun, not much sunlight I used to really dread it so you know I know I know how that feels but how, how was it for you managing that like on a day-to-day -day basis before you actually discovered help for it? I suppose I was, you know, I, I got by. I was just, you know, eating a lot. I was gaining weight. Oh, really? Yeah, I was sort of craving carbohydrates. I was sluggish. I was lethargic. My mood, my mood was changing. Did that affect your relationships with people around you as well? I was lucky. I wasn't as severe as perhaps some women. Mm -hmm. You know, some women are so debilitated where they're really depressed. Yeah. I suppose maybe I was, I was affected, but not so so badly. Mm -hmm. I think some people don't even leave the house, do they, when they're, when they're feeling that way? It really affects them quite a bit. It can affect their esteem, you know, next yeah. minute your esteem and, you're, and you become irritable and, you're sense, and you get in a very negative frame of mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when did you actually discover what the problem was that you actually got, like, um, people get diagnosed with it? I <laughs> think, it? yeah, I think it's becoming more and more aware. I think the GPs are now recognising it's a medical condition. And maybe mm. I read some books, I think I might have, you know how it is, you're in a bookstore and all of a sudden a book come, sort of attracts you and that's the book you mm. need to be reading. And there was a book about sunlight deprivation. And I started to read and think, oh my goodness, this is me. Yeah. I could <laughs> recognise my symptoms in, in the book. 
Right. I had all the, yeah, lots well, that of must plastic. have been a bit of a relief in a sense because at least yeah. you could pinpoint what the problem was and that yes. you weren't, you know, because some people think, oh my God, what's wrong with me? I'm going crazy. I don't know why do I feel this way, but at least you now sort of knew what it was. You could actually get it, get treated for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. What kind of people actually suffer from it though? Well, interesting enough, I was reading somewhere that the statistics in the UK are up to 17 to 20 percent of the UK suffer. It's prim wow. predominantly women. Um, and it's most really? common. Yeah. That is? Well, maybe it's because women are more open about their transparent about their feelings. I think men also get men it probably, too. Yeah, that's the thing because men sort of think they shouldn't talk about their feelings or they need to put on this kind of macho front that everything's okay. So mm. maybe I think with a lot of problems, they just suppress their feelings rather than talking about it and really talking about what they're going through. I do believe yeah. that men suffer too, but I think it's perhaps the women who are expressing that they're struggling more. Maybe mm -hmm. there's more transparency around that. Mm. But I think, you know, I think, you know, it's, mo it's most common in, in ages between 18 and 30. But interesting, mm, I, I don't so know. Strange. I don't know. I was just yeah. But what's really interesting is that it's affecting children now. Really? Gosh. Teenagers, you know. Um, so I think it's really important that, that, you know, if you find that your child sort of, what I was reading was sort of ages between 12 and 15, they're, perhaps their concentration is being affected or they're beginning being particularly tired, but more tired than normal, then mm. it's sort of just to sort of be mindful that maybe there's a connection between the dark. So parents should really look out yeah, for that. I so what are the so. other symptoms? So you, 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 Ooh, there's a you lot. crave carbs, you... Let me think. There's um, lethargy, mm -hmm. um, exhaustion, um, mood swings, um, craving carbs. It can be um, emotionally, one can feel depressed mm. if they're really debilitated. Sometimes it can affect people's um, frame of mind. They may start having negative feelings, negative mm -hmm. thoughts. There might be a sense of helplessness. Um, and the list goes on. Yeah. I mean, anxiety. Gosh, it's quite serious, isn't it? It's it can be. Because most people say, oh, yes. it's just the winter blues, but it really does affect people a lot. Oh, and there's one other, loss of libido. So Really? Yeah. As well. Okay. So how did, how did you actually get help for, for SAD? I was very lucky. I happened to be having a chat with a, a relative, mm -hmm. um, and he, well, my, my kind uncle, he had a light box, and he actually uh, lent me his light box because can, he. Can you explain to viewers what a oh, light okay. box is? Just okay. in case they don't yes, know. We are absolutely. actually going to be showing some light boxes later, but just so we, sure. so viewers know what they are. Okay. So this light box, which I know we're going to go into more detail later, mm -hmm. is like a very big box. Uh, there are different types, but mm -hmm. it, it sort of emits a very, very strong light mm -hmm. that stimulates like a, a bright summer's day. Right. So my uncle was using this in a previous uh, winter period and he lent it to me because mm -hmm. he'd had such a good response because he was very depressed during one winter period. He said, you try it. So I did. Yes. I'd stick it on my desk next to my computer 30 minutes every morning. And did it help? within a week, honest to God, I already, I really did notice it was quite oh, astounding that's really good yeah actually i think i was reading let me see if i've got it here i hope i've mm. copied it on here oh yeah the met the met is actually trying to help with this condition as well we're reading this in the newspaper so what they do um they actually alert sad patients via email voice or text it says that the weather will be bad and to use their light boxes so wow. people people sign up for this and then once they once they sort of know what the weather's going to be like they they alert people already on the one hand i was thinking but doesn't that isn't that kind of counterproductive because maybe they felt okay and then the thought of the weather being bad kind of brings the, the feelings on, but apparently it's done quite well. Mm. Um, and they said here, they said their scheme is a preventative service aimed at helping people with SAD to manage their condition by warning them of periods of increased risk to their health and providing them with treatments to manage their condition. They wrote, overall, the findings of the pilot were extremely encouraging. So it was a pilot thing they're doing, but they're actually thinking of, of actually making it national now for... for from anyone that wants to sign up for it, basically. And they give them like this self-help book as well about diet and the things that they can eat. So I thought that was quite, quite a positive thing that they're doing. Wow. So it's been recognized now. It's fantastic. Yeah. So how, how else can you, can you actually deal with it and what, what other things can you do apart from the light therapy? I think, I think it's really important um, for all your viewers who are watching today to, to know that help is out there, that there yeah. are a lot of things you can do. You know, on a basic level, if the weather is nice, I mean, we, let's face it, we do get some bright days during mm -hmm. the winter. You know, take advantage, go out, 
push yourself to go out, take a stroll, that in itself can make a difference, yeah. you know, to stimulate. Well, so just stay locked up indoors and get feel worse. And the light will stimulate the hormones, you know, the pineal gland to, mm -hmm. to sort of kickstart and, and to feel better, to stimulate, yeah. to correct the imbalance. Okay. So take a walk, eat well, exercise, which is difficult if you're feeling lethargic. Yeah. If you have the money, perhaps you could take a, a winter sunshine break. Yeah. That does really <laughs> help. That's nice, yeah. I, I appreciate not everybody can do that, but if you can, it, yeah, makes, it yeah. can make a, a big difference. It can help you through. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's good to know that for those people who are really struggling, perhaps they, that their symptoms are really debilitating and they're depressed, that, you know, go to your doctor, get the, yeah. the antidepressants. Mm -hmm. um, complementary therapies. Um, you know, there are acupuncture can be very helpful with balancing the hormones. Reflexology can be very helpful balancing mm -hmm. the hormones by working on the feet. You're working all the systems of the body. You can stimulate the pineal gland through the feet. Mm -hmm. So there's that and counselling. Obviously, as a counsellor, yeah, counselling. <laughs> I just a, it's good to it, talk. <laughs> absolutely, no counselling yeah. is very important because yeah. you know, whilst a light box can be very very helpful, you know, at the end of the day. It's not, if you're suffering with depression or you're feeling helpless, your self-esteem is affected, then that's mm -hmm. where, you know, perhaps counselling can really help you, support you, help you make sense of your feelings, mm -hmm. um, that's good, yeah. understand, you know, your feelings, validate your feelings. Just have someone to be able to sort of identify with what you're going through and to understand that you're not just making it up or it's, just, it's not something exactly. that you just click your fingers and get rid of because that really helps. Exactly. And just about the carbs as well, why do, why do people with SAD um, crave carbs so much? I'm not <laughs> sure. Very good for them. I'm not sure. I don't mm. know why carbs. I know, yeah. I know for one of my clients, she just became very hungry and she just started to overeat. Right. And she became very hungry. Because it's interesting because it's a, the seasonal affective disorder, it's, it's um, the hypothalamus it regulates um, hunger levels mm -hmm. and when we are deprived of sunlight the hypothalamus goes out of balance which affects hunger levels so but why carbs I'm not sure gosh see, see that's so, another thing as well yes. I mean, imagine like you're already not feeling great <laughs> about the weather then you start eating more than normal then you put on weight and then you get I know. <laughs> it's, it's like a it's like a snowball thing isn't it, it? and then you feel even it worse it's a downward that, spiral yeah yeah uh, let me see here there was something that I have from let me find it I will tell you to keep on talking, but I can't find it. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. I had some notes. Oh, yeah, hang on. Let me see. Yeah. We've got some notes from the SADA organisation. Oh, they've written something about carbs, actually. SAD right. sufferers tend to crave carbs, and these are fine as long as they're good quality, high fibre, and not covered in fattening sauces. So you can have your carbs, but obviously not, not the bad stuff. Hmm. Resist the temptation to hit the cakes. You'll just get a sugar rush and then a slump in energy and mood. So hmm. it might feel great temporarily but then afterwards it's not good um, back up with plenty of fruit and veg and moderate protein basically a balanced healthy diet is best as always alcohol doesn't work as a way of making yourself feel better and is known to have a depressive effect is that something that you turned to before you you knew what what it was did, did you ever drink alcohol to like kind of ease what you were feeling i'll be honest with you i'm very boring i'm 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 teetotal. Oh, okay, that's so good. Oh, so am I. I'm, that's fine. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, another thing that this says help outdoor exercise, which is what you were talking about mm. going for, also helps to combat SAD, not only because natural daylight on even an average day is better than a light box, but also because exercise is known to make you feel better. Mm. Morning is the most valuable light, especially in winter, and will help to improve mood and metabolism throughout the day. Oh, I didn't know that. Metabolism. Oh, interesting. Indoor lighting under which we try to lead normal lives in winter is just not, not a substitute, but obviously if the days are dark, then the light boxes, are, light boxes are great. And that's from Helen Hansen from SAD. So thanks very much for that information, Helen. Okay, so we're going to speak more about this and you're going to share a bit more, but we're going to be joined with someone that actually deals with the light boxes and everything is going to be explaining more. And I'm sure you can also give your input about how it's helped you and everything like that. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to participate as well, don't forget you can email Chris at chrissybshow.tv. And as I said, after the break, we've got Jonathan Cridland, CEO of Lumi, who'll be showing us some lights that are used to treat SAD and other conditions. So join us after this. Welcome back to the Chrissy Beach. And if you've just joined us, we're speaking about seasonal affective disorder. And that's when people feel really low 
um, when it's dark and in the winter periods. And now also joining us is Jonathan Cridland, CEO of Lumi. Good evening, Jonathan. Hi, Chrissy. Thanks Thank you very so much, much for joining us as well on the sofa. Um, it's a pleasure. Pleasure so, to be here. So you listened to, to Claire before. What did you think about what she was talking about as well? Yeah, really, really interesting and um, a great description of all the symptoms, which um, I'm not surprised as you've been a sufferer of uh, SAD yourself. So, mm. um, so I'm pleased the treatments that you've received have helped, really. Mm. So that's, uh, that's, that's great. But it can be, um, it can be a really um, debilitating type of yeah. um, illness. It's, uh, mm. it's classified by the World Health Organization as, mm. um, um, as a major depressive disorder. So it's, uh, it's, really? um, it's serious stuff. Mm. Um, okay. But there's a whole range of it. So um, there's full-blown seasonal affective um, disorder or SAD. Mm. Um, or there's the winter blues, which is um, like a milder version oh, it of it. Okay. Um, and yeah. it's um, sort of shades of grey going from one to the other. So uh -huh. um, you, you get people who just sort of feel a bit down and um, not in such a great mood in the winter as they are perhaps in the spring. Uh, mm -hmm. You know how it is on a lovely, lovely bright day. You yeah, get out of bed yeah. and full of energy. You've got um, lots of nice things to do. And on a gloomy day in the winter, it's pouring with rain. Perhaps you're getting up, you're, you're going straight to... Um, to work, mm -hmm. perhaps you're, um, you're there in work all day. Um, you don't necessarily get enough chance to get outside for um, to get some fresh air and sunlight, yeah. and um, and then you go back home afterwards. So, um, <laughs> it's so a cycle really. Isn't it? Um, it, it is. So, um, <laughs> so light has a um, a big impact on human mm -hmm. health, and mm -hmm. there are many many different types of. Um, things that light does and uh, affected mood is just one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Lumi manufactures light boxes. We were based just outside Cambridge. Yeah. Um, we've been in business for 21 years and we specialise wow. solely in light therapy devices. Is there more demand for it as the years go on, do you think? Is it something that people are recognising more and more? And Because and I, I, was, I was reading as well that light therapy is one of the most effective things for, for SAD. Yeah, absolutely so. I think gradually people are becoming more aware and obviously um, people like yourselves um, featuring mm -hmm. it, that, um, that certainly spreads awareness mm. about it. I mean, it's, um, it's been well known for many, many years, the effect that, um, that winter has on people. Mm. Um, Hi mm. um, Hippocrates described it um, in whenever Hippocrates was, about um, the fifth, um, fourth or fifth century, I think. So oh, okay. um, but he, <laughs> did, he, <laughs> he didn't he didn't describe um, sad per se, but he, yeah, um, right, he described the, um, um, the, the, the effects. So, so yes, it is becoming better better known, and the treatments, um, the light therapy treatments, are gradually becoming more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, and all, all of ours are based on scientific research. So all of our products that we make are certified as medical devices. So we have to go right. through quite a regulatory procedure to. Um, to comply with that, and um, mm. all the products are backed up by large technical files, etc., and go through okay. a number of tests. And the, the types of things that, um, that that covers are screening out UV, so you can't sit in front of one of our light boxes and get a tan, oh. unfortunately. I'm so, <laughs> tan. Um, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to say. A and but two in one, then. Uh, um, yeah, but... Uh, you can have it. You can visit our um, visit our website and mm. enter a wonderful competition to go off on your dream morning. You can win a um, um, a, a lovely um, break um, okay. on, a, on this competition we've got. Because as you were describing, so get a real tan. Um, yeah, getting real tan and getting outside is um, is fundamentally the, yeah. um, that's the best thing you can do. Really, um, the the outside get yeah. lots of mm. lots of natural. I say light. if you but can't, and you know the, the, the weather is very gloomy. You've brought on three to show us today, haven't you, Jonathan? Can I you talk us through mm, this? I have indeed. So, um, this product here is a dawn simulator, otherwise mm -hmm. known as a wake up light. A dawn simulator. Dawn simulator. Right, okay. Yeah. So okay. basically, what it does is mimics um, the sunrise, and this is oh. something um, Lumi invented these wake-up lights um, back in 1993, and they've obviously um, developed and grown more sophisticated mm. since, but um, the light comes on very, very gradually. You can probably see it here yeah. um, in the camera coming on very gradually over a period of time, which you can, um, typically it's um, 30 minutes, but you can, on some, some of the models such mm -hmm. as this, you can set it for different times. So right. this particular one, you can set it between 
15 minutes, 90 minutes to come. Does it make a noise as well? Is it just the light that comes um, on? It makes a noise at the end. All oh, right, okay, um, that's fine. If, if you want it to. For many in people, case you don't wake up with the light. <laughs> for many people, the, the light's enough. But, right. um, but you've, there's a backup beeper to, um, if you want at the end. Or also there's a radio, an FM radio. Right, okay. In here there's, some, there's various different sounds that you can choose as well. There's so the sound, so sound of birds. So mimics, mimics like sunrise. Mimics the sunrise. So if it's so, cloudy outside and dreary, then you've got... <laughs> so, um, so you have light coming very, very, very gently and totally gradually mm. through, through your eyes. And um, right. you probably, um, if for, for people who, whose curtains don't totally shut out the light, yeah. then they will, um, in sort of spring and summer, they'll tend to wake as the light comes. And mm. that was, uh, um, light's always been a signal to, right. okay. to wake. To wake so, so okay. people's, um, um, these products, um, these dawn simulators, we call them, um, ours are called body clock. Right. Um, this, um, so this is Lumi body clock do you active. Use one of these, Claire? I do. Yeah. I was going to say, I absolutely, I use both the body clock and the, the light box, and I can swear by it. It's a lovely way to start the day. You know, instead of having that horrible alarm clock, which can be very <laughs> alarming, excuse the pun. You should panic attack first yeah. thing in the morning. Yeah. Oh, where am I? <laughs> exactly. It's a very yeah. gentle. It eases you into the day very nicely. It's mm. a lovely way. It does, basically. I mean, it's very little, with, with this, it's different from the light boxes. It's small quantities of, of light mm -hmm. um, affecting you, and people are very, very sensitive at that time of day. So if you can imagine, your eyes are closed, so most of the light is shut out to start with, yeah. and then you've got it fading on really, really, really slowly, so, um, like this, but over a much mm -hmm. longer period of time through through yeah. your eyes so you're receiving the light and it's um um because your eyes um it's red um it's a sort of ready type yeah. of light because your um your eyes are closed in fact it is actually a ready type of light to start with with the type mm. of bulb that we we use and as it goes um um as it lights up it becomes gradually whiter um now the one next to it looks like a desk lamp is that <laughs> um it um it is so um, this is exactly what it's called, actually. It is, of course. Uh, it's an uh, imaginative See, name, I'm an perhaps, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Lumi Desk Lamp. So okay. um, this uses a touch control dimmer here. So you touch it like, um, like this. It goes through four settings, so you can have it brighter. Well, you can see that. Brighter or not. But so what's the difference between using that and just a normal desk lamp? Does, or any, any lights like we're under now, for example? This is... Um, it's two, two things, actually. One is um, it's lots of light. So these lights, um, pro um, you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't particularly um, realise from seeing it on, on a TV, but there are lots of light. In fact, in the studio, mm -hmm. you have masses and masses of, um, of bright lights coming down. But in the, in the average office, um, it's designed to have three to 500 lux, lux being a measurement of the visible light that you actually receive mm -hmm. at your eye. So lux is not something you get from here, um, this, um, the measurement coming off this is, um, is lumens, mm. lux is what you actually receive right. at, your, um, at your eye. So three to 500 um, lux would be a typical office. Um, this will produce at um, a distance of 50 centimetres, two and a half thousand lux. Oh, that's quite a difference. Um, and for the treatment of, um, of sad, it's recommended um, about, um, um, from two and a half thousand to, to ten thousand lux, basically will will treat you. And this mm -hmm. this is of a certain spectrum. It's blue enriched white, so um, it appears white, but it has an added element of blue, and blue has mm -hmm. more. So you effect. can use that as a normal desk lamp, but, but also just to 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 treat yourself as well. But how how long would you have to have that on? Is it something that you would leave on throughout the day when you're working, or you just use it for a little while? How how does it work? If you're if you're short of time, mm -hmm. you can turn it up to face. You don't need to look at it. Um, you can actually remove, in this case, this little diffuser here. Mm -hmm. So the light is then um, much, uh, much brighter. Yeah. And, um, and uh, in that case, 30 minutes. Um, but generally, if you're sitting at a desk, you've probably got lots of time. So, um, so you can have it on for, for longer and you can have it on for um, at lower levels as well as mm -hmm. if you want. So. You don't need to get all your light therapy in one go. You can break it up. You can have 10 minutes here, another 10 minutes um, there. It hasn't got to be um, all, in, all in one block. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so 
Um, so you can have the, this on. It's also a, um, a really, really good desk lamp and reading lamp. And, yeah. um, um, and if you remove the, um, the diffuser, great task lamp. So, it so looks you nice can, as well, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, you can. Um, it doesn't. Mm. Um, it doesn't sort of shout out to someone. This is a, mm. um, a weird light. If you have it on on your desk, it's mm, yeah. um, it's just there and it's useful. It's special. Mm. <laughs> okay, and the one next to it. So. This one next door to it is um, it's really designed for, for home use. It's more powerful. Um, and in fact, actually, if I show you both on at the same time, um, this you'll see is a, um, a bluey white light. Um, it appears it's white. This one is a warmer white light. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, you can tell, yeah. It's more yellowy, isn't it? Like, yeah. So the, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but the, well, they both look a bit yellow on the screen, but mm. this one's more... So this, is, uh, this uses um, broad spectrum tubes, so basically it goes across the, um, the colour spectrum and it produces 10,000 lux at 35 centimetres. Um, so this will, um, again, th um, 30 minutes of light treatment with this is, um, is fine. You can use it at home. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is the most powerful light box in our range. Right. And having a large area like this of light is also quite comforting. And do you actually have to sit in front of it, or do you just have it on in a room, say, where you are? Okay. No, you'd need to be reasonably close for it, because mm -hmm. the, um, the amount of light drops off rapidly as you get further away. Okay. So um, many light boxes, that um, 10,000 lux is a figure which is given for a lot of light boxes, but it's actually mm -hmm. meaningless unless it's combined with dis distance. And so um, you might have a very, very high um, lux reading really close to something, but as you go away, um, wow, it rapidly, okay. rapidly um, declines. So, mm -hmm. but people can, um, if people start off with, um, say, half an hour or even a bit, um, some, something less per, um, per day, um, and see how it works for them, and then they can experiment. It's just guidelines, right. really, and people are different. But you can't overdo it, can you? Um, you, can, you can't overdo it, but okay. um, there's no point probably in, <laughs> in, in sort of st spending glued to it. And mm -hmm. there's uh, light therapy is very, very tried and trusted treatment for, for seasonal affective disorder and also it treats um, um, has effects on other conditions oh, yeah, such as alertness. That, I was reading that it also helps with things like jet lag and things. How, how does that work? Yeah, um, absolutely. The, um, there's something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus which is in, sits in the brain. Um, it's about the size of a, a grain of rice and that controls what are called your circadian rhythms which are your rhythms about the day, so mm -hmm. circadia about the day. So people um, are used to doing things at certain times. The um, humans are diurnal animals. They, they operate during the day with, mm -hmm. with light. Um, if you're a badger, so you're a nocturnal animal. That, that's your, your rhythms in if reverse. You're a you, um, yeah, <laughs> you, you, like the, um, you like the dark. So humans like, um, like the light and they have, um, um, in the brain, they, um, they have a, a body clock, with kind of master body clock, which controls mm -hmm. other little body clocks in different organs. And light is the, um, um, is the trigger. It's, um, it's what um, marks the circadian rhythm. So it, mm -hmm. set, um, it sets it off. When people move to different time zones, all, um, in fact, all of the organs of the body um, behave slightly differently and they get terribly confused. And by applying light at certain times of the day, um, and also excluding light at other times of the day, you can help reduce right. the effect of, of that. Okay. Um, so are there miniature ones that you can take on holiday with you and stuff? Yeah, there are. We, <laughs> there yes, are. you do. Yeah, um, exactly oh, okay. so. Okay, um, that's, so, that's handy. So it's not, it's not um, entirely just about applying light, because also it's actually restricting as well. So, um, mm -hmm. so wearing a pair of dark glasses at, um, at the right time can right. help, and um, we, we've got a guide on our... On our website, we've got a number of guides on our website to different things, such as um, such as SAD, such as jet lag. Okay. Um, um, so, um, also sleep. So sleep's mm -hmm. another thing where where lights have a um, have an impact. So mm -hmm. um, if you, for instance, tend to um, have to get up really early in in the morning, and you'd sooner not, <laughs> um, which uh, <laughs> is. <laughs> Is the case. It's really hard to wake up in the morning when like, it's still dark outside. You mm. just want to stay huddled up in bed. So I suppose something like this will be really good. It, yeah, it can. It, it can make <laughs> you. Um, it yeah. can make you more alert. So yeah. So you and, wake and it up. helps with skin with skin conditions. As um, well? We've got another product which um, which I haven't got with me today, mm -hmm. but Lumi Clear, which uses 
red light and blue light, a very particular spectrum, mm -hmm. and, um, um, and also the, um, you, you mentioned distance, you have to have these close, so you can have mm -hmm. them further, but then you used to need to use them for much longer. But um, the red light heals the, the skin, it, um, it soothes the inflammation if, you, if you've got acne, oh, and the blue light kills the acne bacteria, so the blue light's very, very important. Um, and having that combination of the two, and um, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you have to, you have to use these regularly. You have to use them for 15 minutes um, per affected area um, per day, and within. It's four not bad. That's not long. If like if you've got a skin condition and it's sort of it's bothering you, it's not not much time really to sit in front of something for. If you can't get <laughs> rid of it and you need to resort to antibiotics and um, medication and that mm. type of thing, it's um, it's a, a nice, safe, clean alternative. Yeah. Um, also, if you, for instance, if you're using sticky creams, for instance, to um, and then need to put makeup on, you don't need to do that yeah. using this. Um, it doesn't. Okay. You can go on using whatever treatments you want and still use. This, okay. but um, so oh, that's really interesting. That's so it's good. another, <laughs> it's another source, really. Well, maybe you can both give us some tips. Well, what friends and family? Maybe you can give us your, your opinions, or Jonathan. So, but friend, friends and family, Claire, how can they help if, the, if someone is going through SAD? What's the well, best I think way? What's really important is for the family to be supportive mm -hmm. and to take their their family member seriously. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, validate their feelings mm -hmm. and be sympathetic. Mm -hmm. still when you feel you know? understood, you feel better, don't you? Absolutely. How about you, Jonathan? What do you think? About well, I know it's not you deal with other things, but mm. <laughs> well, in your opinion, how can friends and family help someone with, with Yeah, um, I think that's exactly right. I think being supportive is really, really, um, mm. really helpful. Mm. And mm. Um, in many cases... And buy them a light box for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> Well, exactly, yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Readily available. The All lighting right. department of John Lewis, Boots, <laughs> our website, yeah. readily available. But, um, mm. but just moral support, really, is, mm. um, is, thing, is, is, is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have reached the end of this part, <laughs> unfortunately. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us. Oh. And for also letting people know that you know, you, you are, you're not alone, because if you are going through this, you've heard from, from two people here that understand and they're helping in different ways. So you know, do take advantage of that. And please do speak to someone if you are going through something. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so after the break, we're going to be, well, actually, we're not going to be joined by Lisa Marie because she's injured her knee, but we are going to be having something, a video to show you that will hopefully cheer you up a bit as well. So let's see that after this break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show. Unfortunately, Lisa Marie wasn't able to join us because she's injured her knee. Silly little girl, but never mind. <laughs> She'll be back on hopefully um, next next Friday. But in the meantime, we've got a makeup video to show you. And then afterwards, we are going to show Lisa Marie in a video as well. So let's take a look at this makeup video first. Hi, welcome back to the fashion block at Chrissy B Show. Today, the tip will be about how to uh, take care of your makeup during the day if you put your makeup on in the morning and you have somewhere to go in the afternoon and you are all shiny, especially on a T-zone. A good thing to have and to carry on your purse is a compact powder. Um, it will take the shine out and there is something that you have to have. It's very important to have. So you just press the powder um, on your forehead, your nose, um, and your chin, and that will take care of the shine. Another thing that I wanna talk to you about today is on how to make your lips look fuller, a little bit bigger, and I'll be using a pencil concealer today. You just mark right here. Do it around your mouth. So easy to do and this will make a huge difference. You can use your lipstick inside. If you wanna use pencil, to control your lips, you do it inside 
And if you have big lips and you want to make them look smaller, uh, you're going to do the opposite. You should um, do it inside of your lips. If you want to make your lips uh, look bigger, please don't go outside of the lips. You have a limitation right here. When you see the lighter part, that's you have to stop it before. You can't uh, cross that line because it will not look natural. So if you want to make your lips look smaller, a little bit smaller, you're going to mark right here. You will do the heart just like I did with the light concealer. If I was using a darker uh, lip pencil on my lips, I would do it the same way here. Same way for small lips or for big lips. And right here, it has to be symmetric. If I do this, um, right, everything will look symmetric. So I will mark here. And for big lips, you wanna make a straight line from here to here. Make a straight line and from here to here. This alone will create an illusion that your lips are much smaller and you can, for small lips, if you want to make them look bigger, you will make it more round. You will do it this way. Not straight, straight for big lips. You will do it in a round way. And I hope you liked it. I hope I have helped you. And I see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, Flavia. Now, to get a feel now of something colorful and bright, let's revisit the Africa Fashion Week, as was attended by our very own Lisa Marie, which we miss very much, Lisa. Take a look. Today, we're at the wonderful Spitalfields Market in London to be at Africa Fashion Week. Now, this event first debuted here in London last year, and it had such a major impact that they're back bigger and better in 2012. There's runway shows, there's exhibits, there's so much here to see and do and look at all the fashion that is not just the traditional that you'd expect, head wrappers, but African inspired fashion from around the world. So hope you enjoy it as much as I am going to. Accessories and shoes, I'm so there. This is Africa. This time for Africa. walking in such an amazing show there's some really great pieces there oh yeah I mean it was really great I'm really proud <laughs> it was absolutely awesome um, the catwalk is very long so you can take your time and like the energy behind stage is just amazing and there's so many clothes beautiful things that we love to wear so we love it I mean previously when people think of African fashion they're just thinking of head wrappers and the traditional outfits but we're showing something really different here absolutely there's such a wide variety there's things that you wouldn't necessarily think are African but they're African inspired so I think it's absolutely beautiful very versatile and we have a lot of variety hi so I'm lucky to be here with one of the designers that we just saw showing here today so how did you get to be involved in this kind of fashion, I mean African inspired fashion? We find it uh, on the internet and we participate to the contest um, See Africa Differently and we win the contest, that's why we are on the catwalk today. <laughs> A great time. I have seen some amazing things in the shows, seen some great food stores and 
might have to spend a bit of money on some of those stalls. But what I would do is highly recommend that you come down here and have a look next year, where I'm sure it's going to be even more amazing. Thank you, Lisa. Now, just before I say anything else, I'd like to tell you all about joining the Chrissy B family. Now, this is something very, very nice that we've started doing on the Chrissy B Show. And you actually subscribe on the website, chrissybshow.tv, and you can get an exclusive newsletter with personal tips from me. You can be entered into free competitions as well, given you get free giveaways and things like that. And maybe you'll even get the opportunity to be here with us watching a live show with VIP treatment, refreshments and everything and maybe even going out filming with us one day as well. So if you want to be part of the Chrissy B family, you can join by going to my website, www.chrissybshow.tv. Now, you know, our, our, our guests that were on earlier, they spoke a lot about SAD and things like that. So we just had a few um, home remedies here as well that I'd just like to give you a couple of pointers on. Um, it's saying here that, and not, not, not maybe necessarily if you have SAD, but maybe you just feel a bit sort of down in the, in the winter period. It's saying here that soak up the morning light. Get as much natural light as possible between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. So, you know, you kind of push yourself to wake up a bit earlier. Get outside and go for a walk or at least sit by a window so you can get that nice bright light as well. It's saying as well, um, avoid self-medication with alcohol or caffeine because... The caffeine and stuff will give you a brief lift, but then it will make you feel bad afterwards as well. Have another thing here. Apparently, basmati rice is good for you. The sugar in this rice is slow to release into the bloodstream, which helps blood sugar levels stay constant instead of going through highs and lows. Herbal teas is, is very, very... I mean, herbal teas are good at any, any time anyway, but it's saying any herbal tea is, better, is a better choice than teas with caffeine. Your reduced energy level may cause you to turn to caffeine for a boost, but it can also cause anxiety, muscle tension and stomach problems. So opt for herbal. Now, they're giving some suggestions here. Chamomile, peppermint and cinnamon are pleasant tasting choices. So drink a cup instead of giving into your carbohydrate craving. So there's a few things here as well. But do you know what? I Like I said before, I used to... I wasn't ever diagnosed with SAD, but I know how I felt during the sort of when it was getting dark and everything. And, you know, the weather did have a serious effect on me before, but it doesn't anymore. And as I said, you know, I've, I've told you my story before about the help that I got for what I was going through. So I don't think, you know, we can say it's something that's not curable because I really do think it is because I'm cured from it anyway. But also as well, even if you don't suffer from SAD or, you know, you're not suffering from depression or, or like... You know, you don't have the, the winter blues so much, but sometimes when you see the weather's a bit bad and like you, you kind of, you don't feel as great as you normally do, try to see the beauty in everything. You know, you know, when you look at the different seasons, there's so much to do as well. You can, winter's a nice period. For me, it's like before when I used to see the rain, I was like, oh God, it's so horrible. I don't want to go out in the rain. But now I see things differently. I try to see the beauty in the rain as well. So I, you know, put on the wellies, get the, get the umbrella out. And it's just nice. You can just have fun in it. So if you expect to feel bad sometimes. If you see the rain and then you expect to feel badly about it, you probably will end up feeling bad. But if you find things to do and actually look forward to things, even if the weather's really bad, you can enjoy it as well. What I do sometimes, I love actually going to, um, for example, going for a coffee or tea or whatever when, when the weather's really bad. It's just sort of a cosy, nice environment. So try not to see things in a bad way and don't expect to feel bad because the weather's bad and you probably find that you start to feel differently as well but if you do need to talk obviously if you do need that extra help you can also email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv i'm always willing to listen to you i'm always willing to correspond with you like i said i've been for a lot in my life and i'm always willing to talk to you as well if you're going through anything and of course if it's something that you need professional help for I'll, i can refer you to the appropriate organizations so we have actually finished our program for today. Do join me again on Monday. We will be talking about the dangers of being a perfectionist. Now, most people think being a perfectionist is a great thing, but we're going to be showing to you why actually it can have a very, very damaging effect on people as well. So that will be on Monday. But do have a wonderful weekend and bye-bye for now. <laughs>